Hello everyone. I thought I'd put together a video of a couple machines that I purchased and uh, hopefully it's helpful for you if you're deciding between these two brands. Uh, maybe help you make up your mind as to, to which one's better for you. Now I uh, picked this one up at Costco. It's a Surla table, uh, Surla tab. Uh, it was about $400 plus I think $10 shipping and um, I liked it. The problem was that when I first started using it, this grinder kept sticking. The beans kept sticking in here. It's a very simple um, kind of uh, shoot here. And for whatever reason, the beans got stuck and I kind of got frustrated with it having to put a little paper clip under here to dislodge the beans that I saw this uh, Breville on Facebook Marketplace. They were selling it for $600 and it's, it's pretty much brand new. They just missed their return window, so they wanted to unload it. So I thought, well, what the heck, I'll give it a try. Now, if you are considering a Breville, I probably would not recommend the touch model. And the only reason for that is that you're paying a lot more for this automatic frothing. And in my usage, I haven't found the automatic frothing to really work that well. Um, I'm not, I'm a novice at frothing and I can produce better results just frothing it by hand. So um, I wouldn't pay the you know, two or 300 bucks more that it, that it costs for that, that frothing wine. I just don't think it's worth it. Um, and uh, the pro model I think is, is just you know, a better value. Uh, I think it's like normally 899, but they go on sale sometimes for around 700. So that's, I'd get the pro model if you're considering the two. But in any case, um, this machine from Costco, it looks really sharp. I didn't think, you know, I wasn't that impressed with it when I saw it online, but it, it actually looks pretty cool. I like the retro gauge. Um, the backsplash, you can see the difference between the Breville. It's kind of a, a mirrored, a very, very reflective backsplash. Back, uh, backsplash in this. Um, it's kind of a matte. Uh, it's a little bit brighter. The only thing I don't like is it scratches pretty easily. Both of these actually scratch pretty easily. So, like, uh, in fact, this porta filter, when you turn on the Breville, it makes this buzzing sound. I'm assuming because it's heating up the water. And I had this porta filter on top and it actually buzzed it off and put a nice little dent on my, uh, my grill here. You now it's just, uh, just some minor annoyances. Okay, let's talk about some of the differences. Um, the nice thing about this Breville is that it's it's got this touch screen. So when you, you just turn it on and you pick, say, a latte, it gives you, you know, this grind thing. It tells you how many seconds it's going to grind for a brew. You can hit hot water. Um, you can, do, because this, this wand is up, it's, it's telling me manual frothing, but, you know, you put it down for normal frothing and it'll, it has a temperature sensor so that it'll stop when it gets to a certain temperature. Um, but, um, it's kind of nice because like, for example, let's say you're grinding. I'm not, I don't actually have any beans in here, but as you grind, it's showing you 15, 14, 13, you can stop it and it'll pause it and it'll tell you how many seconds are left on your grind. If you want to tap down your, your grind and, um, weigh it and you can keep going and it, it'll remember where you stopped. It'll do 10 more seconds. Well, actually that's one downside is I waited too long talking and it actually reset. But in any case, if you want to do temporarily, kind of turn it off, it'll, you know, it'll pause it and then you can continue for the rest of the ground. Now on this uh, Surla tab from Costco, basically the way it works is you have two grinds, one's for supposedly for a single shot, one's for a double shot. But basically they're just two settings. And I think they're factory set for a certain amount but what you can do is you can just hold it down and as you, you know, it's supposed to grind and hold it down and, and you can just kind of keep holding it until you get the number of seconds you want and then you release it. Well, it should in theory work that way. It's not working. But anyway, that's how you set it. But, but notice that when you turn it on and stop it, it just starts, you know, you, you're back to start. So unless you're going to let it run for the whole time setting, in which case your porta filter is going to fill up with a lot of grinds and it spill everywhere. I don't find it that useful. I just 
would basically put my grinds in, tap, tap them down, put them on the scale, and until I get to about 18 grams for a double shot of grind, then I'm good to go. You know, you can stir it with your WDT tool or whatever, tamp it, and, and you're good to go. The, uh, the other difference is, I don't know if you can see this, but basically it's just a all kind of metal portafilter. Um, and then you put the basket in. Where did I put the basket? There's the basket. Uh, the Brevel is a little different. The portafilter is got this little plastic thing in here. And I'm told the, from the research I've done, at least, the reason for that is you kind of want a warm portafilter when you're brewing coffee. So this, if you're not going to heat up your portafilter, this plastic kind of catches the water and it's not going to hit cold metal. So that's the reason it's there. You may or may not prefer that. Some people take it out, but supposedly it's there to make your coffee taste better. The other difference is this is a 54 millimeter portafilter and this is 58. So I think you can probably tell the differences. Yeah. The 58 is definitely, you can tell it's a bit wider. Uh, I'm not sure if this will show up on the video, but the Brevel is a little bit taller. Um, but, you know, no big deal. You're you're probably going to want to get a, a dosing funnel anyway. Um, that way you can just pour all the grinds in your portafilter. Um, you can stir it with your, your distribution tool, which I, is highly recommended from what I've read. That's the best way to, to get the, the best um, puck is you want to use this distribution tool. It's basically a bunch of needles and, and cork. You can, you can pay like 20 bucks to buy one on Amazon. But that supposedly will make your um, shots way better and, um, because it'll, it'll break up the clumps in the grind. Okay, other differences between these machines. Okay, like I talked about this grinder. Um, this one is pretty simple. It starts at, z at negative five, I guess. Zero. What I found for... Uh, just the beans I've been testing. I've been just using this as Starbucks espresso dark roast You know when you finally dial everything in and you get into this you want to get fresh beans and stuff But for testing purposes, you know like 14 bucks or something for a big bag at Costco. It's great for testing. Anyway, I found about 15 for that dark roast was about right for the grind size um, basically for about 18 grams, you you want to get you want to pick up a scale too. You definitely need a scale. Just get a cheap scale on Amazon. But so you can want so you want to um, weigh your your grinds. You want about 18 grams for a double shot. Um, you know, and then um, so basically, you know, you get, you probably want to um, also heat up your porta filters for the best coffee. Um, but um, and then you'll then you tamp it, of course. Now. The tap that comes with this, this uh, Surly Tide, well, it's actually pretty nice. It's it's solid metal, heavy. Um, there's a place to put it up here. On the Reville, you kind of get this very light, smaller tamp. But I find it actually works pretty well. I mean, you know, tamping is not, there's not a whole lot to it. It's From what I've read, it's more important to distribute your grinds before tamping, that's going to make a bigger difference than you just want to kind of get a level tamp when you tamp. But it's kind of nice that this fits right in here in this kind of magnet and it stows away real easy so you can kind of free up space. Okay, uh, other differences. Now this certainly table is a double boiler. Um, so that means there's two boilers in there, which means that you can... Um, you know, do shots and froth at the same time. And I'm just going to demonstrate that you can actually do that. Uh, I don't have any fancy espresso cups, but uh, so I'm basically using this uh, small little uh, cup that I had in my cupboard. It looks halfway decent. But anyway, you know, you can be pouring a shot and you can be frothing from the frother. And a frost is fine. In fact, I'll put a little water in here. See, so you definitely can steam and uh, make espresso at the same time. 
not a big deal for me because I'm usually, I'm not that much of a multitasker when I'm making my coffee. Um, so I'm, you know, going to be doing my, uh, my milk or, co or coffee, you know, pretty much right after each other. But I mean, it's not the 20 seconds it takes to make the shot isn't, isn't going to make or break the milk. Um, so I, I don't mind not having a double boiler, but some people, maybe that's important to you, especially if you're making multiple coffees. Um, the nice thing about this Sur La Table is, um, you know, it's more of a classic frothing wand. It goes right off to the side, so that's kind of nice because I have my sinkers right here, so I could just kind of blow air off to the side. This one with the Breville just kind of goes up and down. You can't go the other way um, for whatever reason. Okay, what other differences? Okay, so talked about the grinder here. It's pretty simple. Just turn it left and right. Um, and I've opened it up and cleaned it and it's, you know, there's only, there's a burr in there. There's no internal burr setting. Um, whereas in the Breville, and I'm not going to open it up because I have some beans in there and it'll spill everywhere if I do that. But you can actually take this, this, uh, this kind of cover thing off. There's an internal burr in there. So you kind of have this grind setting on the, on the left where you can, uh, you just set your main setting like this. But as you're, um, your grind over time is going to maybe wear down a little bit. You need to, and it's not going to grind as fine as it used to. You can actually change that inner burr um, so that it'll it'll kind of fine tune, make it so that you can grind it even finer as your burr um, loses some of its wear. I guess that's what I, you know, a lot of people naively tell everyone, on, uh, "Hey, when you first get your machine, change the internal burr from six to two, and from." From the research I've done, it makes no sense, and it's just going to wear out your burrs faster. So don't don't follow that advice. At least that's that's what I've my understanding. Here's another. Here's one thing I really don't like about the Surly Table, and, and it's not a big deal because you, maybe you're going to get a fancier porta filter. But um, I'm not sure if the video will show up. But you can see how it's slanted. So when you take this this out and you need to tamp. Unless you have a tamping station or something like that, it's not going to be flat. So I kind of made this little, you know, thing that doesn't, I mean, at least it gets it somewhat level. Um, on the Breville, it's nice and flat. I mean, it, it just, just uh, kind of a thoughtful touch they put in that, so you, you have it flat when you want to tamp, which is nice. You also get this, um, we call it a razor. So basically after you've tamped and spread your grounds and tamped, you just put this in and it'll make sure that it your your puck is the right height from the top. So you can if you if it's a little too high, it'll just shave it off and then you just put it in the sink. It works okay. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if it's really that big of a deal. Most people most people that, that use these machines, I don't even think they use this. Um, the Breville comes with these pressurized baskets if you want to use them. Um, the whole point of buying these expensive machines is to use a, a non-pressurized basket. So kind of worthless, but at least they give them to you. There's some cleaning tools in here. I won't go into that. Um, there's the single shot. And this stove is actually underneath in the back here. Um, same thing with the stove table. Kind of has this, this tool thing, little cleaning things. You don't get non-pressurized baskets with this, but who cares? Um, what else about these machines? Okay, so like I mentioned, this one is pretty much analog. I mean, you you turn on the power. It takes about I don't know thirty seconds or so for all the for the water to heat up enough to make coffee. This thing heats up pretty nicely up top, so you can kind of warm your glass. This one is a, from what I understand, is a, the cheaper Brevilles at least. It's a thermal block. It's not a boiler. Um, but it heats up really fast. I mean, it does the trick for me. Uh, but, um, you know, that may be important to you. Um, this, I can't really show it on the video, although I can, you know, I'll put this back here. All right, so you see back here, the uh, water container on the uh, silly table. It's actually quite big. It's about 50% more water um, storage. I think, and here on the Breville, yeah, kind of hard to pull it out. Kind of has this fancy handle. You can pull it up. It also has a little filter inside. I don't know if you can see that filter in there, which is kind of a nice touch. But 
you know, no big difference between the two. I mean, there's just a kind of water reservoir. I kind of prefer having more water uh, in, the, in the Costco one, Servitable. Okay, anything else to talk about? Um, I guess um, the, the, which one am I going to keep? I'm going to keep the Breville. And the reason for that is um, in just the testing that I've done with, of course, those beans, which aren't the freshest beans, but it just the, the espresso comes out smoother and more balanced. Um, using the same grind, same, you know, pushing it through 30 seconds to get um, 36 grams of coffee for 18 grams of, um, of grinds. Same thing on this one. The Breville just, it just, I don't know, every time it just seems to produce a, a nice shot of, shot of um, coffee. Um, of course, now I'm I'm primarily doing espresso um, lattes, so you know you're filling it with milk, and we got some syrup here. Um, you really can't tell the difference that much, but I mean, if you're just drinking espresso, I have a feeling that this is going to produce better espresso. Could be my machine. Maybe there's something wrong with it. One thing I have noticed, and a lot of people complain about in the uh, reviews at Costco, is that you get these wet pucks. Maybe I'll run some shots and show you pause the video but um, I consistently get wet pucks and everything I've read says hey don't worry about wet pucks unless it manifests in the taste well these pucks come out nice and relatively dry so and they taste better so maybe it is manifesting in the taste I don't know um, but uh, given that this was only a couple hundred bucks you know like a hundred you know, since I didn't pay tax on that, it actually was only like a hundred bucks more. Uh, I just, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to return this for Costco to Costco. Um, it's just got so many more nice touches. I don't think I've touched on all of them. I can't think of them right now at the time. Um, but it, it just, I don't know, it's just, I just, I prefer using this machine over this one, but really there's no difference. The only thing I miss on this is it doesn't have this, uh, this pressure gauge so you can gauge whether it's um you know in the right pressure zone uh, but overall there's there's not really anything wrong with either of these machines if you want to um you know only want to spend 400 bucks on an espresso machine this is not a bad machine um oh one other thing i was going to mention the um it's actually kind of hot the uh, frothing wand on this is solid steel this one is kind of a plastic key um but, but I found that this, this actually frosts a little bit better for whatever reason. Maybe it's just my technique. Um, and also when it's, when it's hot and you finish frothing and you're just going to take a rag and wipe this down, I found that the metal, the milk, just, if you don't get it off right away, it's going to stick to that. Whereas this, um, this kind of more, I don't know what it is, chromey plastic, it, it wipes off real easy. Um, after frothing. So I kind of prefer that on the Breville. Um, the other thing I kind of don't like about this Breville is when you turn it on, it makes this buzzing sound. And I don't know if I have a warranty issue, but I notice... Let it go. I notice that it, it shoots a little water down here when it's, it's turning on. So I don't know if my relief valve is, is maybe stuck open a little bit. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I'm sure, you know, it'd be covered under warranty. It's not a big deal. It, it produces espresso just fine, but I'm having to empty this tray a lot because it, the water is leaking through here. Um, again, I don't think that's common to these machines. I, I Googled it, didn't find anything on that. So I think it's just a little flaw in this one that is easily going to be taken care of during warranty. Um, okay, hopefully, hopefully that's been helpful. Maybe I'll pour, do a couple shots and come back later. Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention um, that I really like about this Breville is, oh, turned it off by mistake. Um, and other than that buzzing on the startup, which I guess is heating up, but when you um, put the porta filter in here to do your grounds, you just push it. Oops, well I gotta actually have it on something here. You push it and it grinds. 
which is really nice, you know, because your hands are already here. Whereas on this one, it's kind of flimsy when it goes into the thing, and then you kind of have to hit the the grind thing. I mean, not not that big of a deal. It's just just nice little touches like that on the Breville, you know, from the magnetic tamper. Um, oh, the other thing too is when you're done frothing on this one, and you put it back down, it shoots. Um, steam out of here to automatically clean it at, so that you don't have to remember to, to wipe it down. Just just small little differences that just make this a little bit more, um, you know, nicer to use. Just just appreciate having the touches. But again, nothing wrong with, with this machine. If you can tweak it to get your espresso to taste good, um, I don't really see any reason, you know, uh, to spend a ton of money. Okay. All right, ready to do a couple pours. Um, one thing I do like about the Surly Table is when you put the portafilter in, it snaps in really nice um, to the machine. It's a little bit, I wouldn't say it's loose, it just, it just kind of gives you that confident snap. Whereas on the Breville, there's no snap. It's just, you know, you pull it until you feel like it's in there enough. And... Uh, I don't know, I just, just kind of like the way this this goes in, but the uh, ultimate uh, proof is in the pudding. All right, so um, let's do a pour on this one. I've got my scale teared to zero. I've got 18 grams of espresso in here. So in theory, for a dark roast, we want uh, 36 grams on my scale. So I'm gonna hold down the double shot button until I get 36 grams, and I'll watch the, uh, the needle to make sure it's in the right range. Hopefully I I got this dialed in. I haven't used this machine in a while, but I use grind setting at 15. Okay, here we go. And of course, it's not gonna. No. About six seconds until the first stuff came out. It's right in the middle of the gauge, so that looks good. I've got about. 36 grams of espresso in 20 seconds. Uh-oh. Well, that poured a little fast, so maybe I, I needed to go um, a little finer on my grind. But, uh, <clears throat> see how it tastes. Okay, I will spoon out. Use a fork. Don't tell anyone I'm not using a proper spoon. Yeah. I don't know, probably could have extracted a little longer. Uh, let's take a look. Now you also notice that um, just all this stuff keeps coming out of the, through the table. I, it just, it's so soggy. Ah. And there's the puck. You can see it's a little bit soggy. Not not too bad, I've had worse. Um, I know you shouldn't put it down in disposal, but for now I'm just gonna do that. Yeah, a little soggy. Okay. All right, so ready to go on the Breville. Got my scale, tapered to zero, 18 grams of espresso. And I'm just gonna hit this brew button. And yeah, let's see when the espresso comes out. It's the exact same grind. I ground both at 15 in this machine. After about Eight seconds, got my first uh, espresso coming out. And we're already at 22 seconds and not even, even at 36. I'm just gonna let this go and see if it stops at the right time. So it's at 36 and it stopped right away. These are all factory default settings. Um, Kind of interesting, you, you know, same exact amount of espresso uh, run through the machine. This one poured way fast. All right, let's give it a taste. Again, I didn't, wasn't really planning to do a taste test or anything like that. Much smoother, sweeter, not as much bite. Again, I probably, I probably could have fine-tuned this it was this really wasn't a test to see you know which one tastes better but just i mean it just every time i use this machine i just 
it's just so much easier. I, I don't know why. Less frustration. Let's see what the puck looks like. Now, well, it's a little bit wet actually. But um, in general, I've had much better luck uh, getting drier pucks out of this. I probably ran out a teeny bit long. Um, I'm sure you can fine tune either of these machines to you know your preferences. Like I said, if you only want to spend $400 on an espresso machine, there's nothing wrong with this one. Um, if you find a good deal on a Reveal, nothing wrong with this one. And if you really get into it, quite honestly, right now, um, there's some fantastic, you know, entry level grinders that are really good grinders like the, uh, I think it's called Barzata or something like that, 270. Um, normally is like 400 bucks. It's selling, it's on sale, which is unheard of for about 280. And then, you know, you could get a, um, a Gagia Pro. It probably would be a better setup than either of these machines. And, and you can get that for around, you know, a little under 700 bucks right now from, uh, I think, at Whole Lot of Love, eh? Whole, Whole Latte Love or something like that. Anyway, hope this has helped you guys. Um, peace out.